Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome to this Let's Build of the Tau Commander. Now here you see I'm just unboxing it. Um, it comes in just a cardboard box and then a plastic kit inside because this is a fine cast kit. Now uh, I think this is the first time I've worked with fine cast, so a lot of it was an experiment. I felt the clippers might damage things, so instead of using clippers to remove items this time, I got on there and I used my knife just to see what it was like and because the fine cast is a lot softer it, it came off a lot easier. So once I've got it off I'm just going to clean it up, try and get all the little bits off but with fine cast there is a lot to clean up. Um, you have to check your pieces and models very carefully and um, take off lots and lots of tiny little bits. So once I'd cleaned them up um, I got some of my glue here, my super glue, and this super glue is actually very old and needs replacing. I think I have actually now replaced it after this recording, but there we go. I'm just popping the uh, the legs together to form the lower half of the commander, and you've got to be careful when doing this because if you don't get it right, the whole stance of the commander gets thrown off. We might be able to see that later. So yeah, going back to how soft this thing is, it's really difficult to work with. I have worked with it once before um, and I then put the model on top of my monitor whilst I did some other things and it did start to melt it bent right over um, I had to use some gentle heating to get it put back but um, yeah in my personal opinion fine cast not not great the the benefits of slightly slightly better um, you know quality of image uh, is not really worth the soft, very difficult to work with plastic. And nah, it's just it's personally not for me. But there's some models you can only get in fine cast. And and to be honest, I really had to have this commander in my army because we need him to lead the force, the Tau army, into victory. So um, there we go. Just putting the upper body bits together here. So there's the main upper body and uh, I guess it's time just to put the two together so um, struggling with my super glue here I did try different glues on some practice pieces to different degrees of success and in the end I decided that my super glue was probably going to be the best thing to use at the time so um, with this model um, I'm also going to attempt to magnet it the first time I've ever magneted a fine cast model but um, We'll get to that soon. So I got the legs onto the upper body and I cut the uh, the arms out and put them on. Um, the antenna on the head there uh, that I'm about to attach to the body uh, have since broke off the model twice. Um, they are so, so soft and flexible. Um, they just seem to bend as well. So you end up with bendy antenna and then you try and straighten the antenna and they all fall apart so um, to summarize the last three minutes of ranting no not really a fan of fine cast um, it in my opinion it, it wasn't the way to go but here we go um, it can be done it's just a bit more of a pain cutting more bits out just sticking more bits on making sure the arms are in the positions I want them in and here you see that I've just used a bulldog clip to hold things together a little bit whilst I uh, try and get it all in place and I've also cut out the weapons that we're going to magnetize later so there is the commander as he is but we need to sort it out now to get these weapons on so there is uh, four points to magnetize on the body itself I'm just using a, uh, a power driver here and in the end, the arm wasn't completely glued on, so I thought, you know what, I'm taking it off <laughs> to make things easier. So I'm using uh, a three and a half millimeter bit. Um, sometimes I use a 3.2 millimeter um, bit on these parts as well. It depends on the situation, but I'm just using it in the screwdriver there to to bore a hole in each of the side of the arms and also on the top of the jetpack. So one on the one side of the top of the jetpack and one on the other. So uh, I do something similar with the uh, with the weapons. Just bore a hole either in the top or in the side, depending on what the weapon is. Obviously, um, 
all the weapons that we've made up for our crisis suits, they should be able to fit this too. So I'm just cleaning up some extra bits um, after drilling some of those holes. And here you see I'm just slowly uh, drilling through this one. Now um, I decided to just completely go through the whole piece with this one because the thickness of the weapon is not very thick. Uh, and I thought, well, we'll put some green stuff in, we'll put a magnet right in the middle, and that way it's going to be nice and flush. So here we go, this is me popping all the bits in, so make sure that it matches up with all the other weapons we've got. I've got my, um, my primary weapon there, that missile pod that I always use, and I just put the magnet on it and then I've slid it into the arm. So that I know that that magnet in the arm will not only attach to that missile pod, but everything else that I've got. And a bit of liquid green stuff to uh, help sort it out there. So it's the same on the other arm. I'm just going to put a little bit liquid green stuff in the arm itself because I, it's a little bit deep. Um, there's three different ways you can embed magnets. You can uh, either drill a hole, pop the magnet in with some super glue and then cover over the top. Um, you can put some green stuff in and then try and push the magnet into the green stuff. Or you can melt the magnet in, and I wouldn't advise melting the magnet in because um, high temperatures actually damage the magnet. So either drill a hole and super glue it in, or just um, use green stuff to make sure it's secure in there. Now I had a little bit of problems making sure that I got the polarity correct for the weapons here because um, I had trouble keeping my magnets in place, working with this particular plastic did make it slightly more challenging but um, here you can see I'm just using a blade to lift the magnet off the missile pod instead of sliding it this time so that I can then land the magnet the same way around as the missile pod so the magnet in that weapon has the same polarity as, as the one in the missile pod that I used as the template. Well there's the model I've, uh, I've sprayed it so you can see it a little bit better and you can see that the weapons are all now attached via different uh, magnets. Uh, the two on the top of the jetpack at the back and um, you can see there the magnet in the arm. I haven't covered it up completely yet so that you can see it there but I will go over with a final layer of green stuff just to cover that and finish it off. Overall it's a nice model, I like it, it does lean back a little bit if you don't get it perfect, you may need to warm it up either in a bit of water or with a heat gun and just bend it forward a bit so it balances, but um, yep, yeah, it's a nice model, I like it, stands proud amongst my other crisis suits, but that's all for now, uh, thank you for watching this build, remember if you enjoyed the video to give it a like, comment with anything you want, and for now, thank you for watching and goodbye.